My dudes, Carter Bates be tripping. It's been a busy day. Team getting all of our cabinets and stuff together. But I wanted to talk to you today about something else that's been coming up. We've had quite a few people reach out to us about kind of like a market pullback right now. And I'll just bottom line, people aren't really wanting to hear too much about Bitcoin mining right now. They're trying to understand what's going on with Bitcoin price with all of this crazy like uh, amount of momentum in the space when we start talking about like crypto ETFs, we talk about sovereign funds, uh, if you're talking about, uh, you know, just investment from private equity, private placements, all of these things that generate demand on Bitcoin, with all that in flight, why, why don't we see more performance on Bitcoin's price? And, uh, you, know, I, you know, I've talked to people about this before. And again, all of this stuff is not financial advice. What this is, is just my purview on the space and talking with other, you know, if it's lenders, people in the space that have a, a deep knowledge of the way the financial markets work. And what I wanna do is so, uh, provide you a perspective I don't hear a lot out there from people from. And I don't know why we don't hear more about this, but maybe it's just who I'm watching and seeing in this space. But I wanna provide you a perspective of why when you see something like BlackRock for the ETF side buying, or if it's Vanguard or somebody big taking tranches of Bitcoin and then moving it and why the price isn't really moving on that. A lot of that is because you have order desk out there, OTC desk, you know, over the counter desk, out there facilitating the trade. So essentially in the background, it's not hitting spot. It's not going through an exchange. It's not hitting the available supply on that exchange, right? So you have that situation where things are happening, but it's not, it's not affecting price. So the speculative nature of the industry is, hey, this must mean there's a huge amount of demand, which there is. Like they're taking coins from one wallet and moving it to another and then associating that to another series of people at a certain price. And they will predicate that based on what current spot price is. So you have just a lot of lateral movement of coin switching wallets without affecting spot price. So, you know, you get this kind of macro environment where you have all this news and inference out there of like, this, this should be pumping. Why isn't this going up? And the whole time is there, you know, there's people obviously selling to the market to keep it down, but then you get OTC trades happening in the background. And what's gonna happen, the realities are, is once that supply dries up, once there's no more, there's people really having a hard time finding OTC buys, then where else does the coins come from? And then you go back to mining, you look at the mining. Right now we're at about 450 coins per day in this space that are generated and have a potential to hit the market. It isn't the 450 coins hit the market, right? There's all kinds of different people around the world that earn Bitcoin for the mining that they do. And, that doesn't mean that they're immediately selling it to pay for power or whatever else. If you look at a lot of the public traded mining companies, they're out there holding as much as they can and they're borrowing cash at you know a rate or borrowing from the market, selling off stock to create the the overhead revenue, you know, the overhead cost expense side. And they're not selling their Bitcoin because they're looking at days that it's, you know, they're leveraging it as a, uh, you know, just having some, some equity in their holdle that they can borrow against, right? So you end up having a situation where you don't have a ton of coins surging onto the market from at least the minor aspect of it, the minor inflation, 450 coins per day. And the next halving, we'll be having that again, right? We'll be at 225 or, two, you know, 200 and, uh, uh, yeah, about 225 coins per day uh, after the next halving, right, of inflation rate. So what's gonna happen is, in my humble opinion, is that that OTC orders and all these different, um, you know, if it's Silk Road coins from the US government, if it's sovereign funds that have taken positions in Bitcoin and then they sell when it pumps up a little, that activity is gonna dry up eventually as you start getting more and more of these different ETFs and things approved because they got a hold and they're gonna hold the coin and you can see their public addresses and you can see where the coins are moving. And we're gonna have this kind of 
event that is going to just be when the demand's there and then there's no more OTCs to fill, that then you'll start to see some huge price increases. Um, and it's equivalent to that kind of like back market activity versus retail market hitting like you know, the exchanges hit buying stuff from Coinbase, buying it from Binance, buying it from Robinhood, all that kind of stuff. That's the retail market kind of influx, right? So I think that private side, once we start to see that kind of dwindle out, then we'll start to see some really good price action. Because at the end of the day, the fundamentals are very simple on Bitcoin. And I think there's a ton of content and a lot better articulation of that content other than me. I'm just a lowly miner that has been around for a long time for you guys but uh, around the space and understand enough about the economics to to help communicate the message that you know there is a mountain of effort that has went into this the uh, software side into the capability side for people to be able to participate be in the etfs and that and then once we see that kind of graduation to or at least in like modern economies kind of first world economies that have the charters to let banks and let other groups participate to where the the rank and file that are out there that are just living their life getting a salary investing and they can go to their bank and have you know maybe a bitcoin underneath you know like they have their balance and then they have a bitcoin balance and they can go out there and hit buy like that. And you start having this increased demand at a retail level and the ease of use at a retail level, then you might start seeing some serious uh, adjustments to those prices because there will be a demand that just won't be able to be met from the traditional OTC side of the market. So I've talked to people about this. I explained that kind of thing uh, to folks and I just wanted to make sure that people were you know, out there, they're like, hey, this is, that's a really good view. Um, that's an understanding of the way things work in the background. And just from being a miner and, and getting our small portions each day of the inflation of Bitcoin, you know, that is on that schedule, like how much do we sell? How much, how much gets actually influenced into that market at move price? So hopefully that was a good one for you guys today. We'll get back to some, some proper like uh, mining content. Um, just been getting the shop ready to go and stuff but wanted to give you guys something good today when it comes to just something around you know bitcoin price it being around fifty six, fifty five thousand dollars today i thought it would be a good video for you guys i'll catch you guys in the next one peace